continue to be blessed with long life. Yeah. Yeah. My Lords, may I first uh, join with others in thanking Lord Pickles for securing this debate. And like most in this House down the years, I have had the honour and privilege of meeting with and hearing at first hand the brutal but brave testimony of Holocaust survivors. Sadly, each year the number of those survivors diminishes, and it will not be many years before they disappear from the face of the earth altogether. But we cannot afford to have their passing simply mean that, that also our commemoration and education of the Holocaust passes into history as well. Indeed, I would argue that commemoration and education is more relevant today than it has ever been. And the work of organisations such as the Holocaust Educational Trust and the project of Lessons from Auschwitz, which I was very proud as Education Minister in Northern Ireland to reinstate to Northern Ireland, are equally uh, relevant. The Holocaust was the most horrific example of genocide in the history of mankind, with a range of groups targeted by the Nazis, and in particular, an attempt to wipe from the face of the earth the Jewish population. Stalin once said that the death of an individual is a tragedy, the death of a million is a statistic, and we are often faced with mind-blowing statistics about the numbers involved in the Holocaust, but we should always remember behind every statistic involved with the Holocaust lies an individual family, an individual person, an individual tragedy. And for that reason alone, it is worth commemorating and educating future generations. But it is not simply for that reason that we should do that. We live in an era in which truth, and particularly historic truth, is under attack. We do have an era in which information is more readily available and in greater quantity than ever been in the history of mankind. Yet we also live in an era where misrepresentation, misinformation, and conspiracy theories pass around the world like wildfire. An era where facts can simply be dismissed as fake news and where history can be twisted and rewritten according to the purpose of those who are prepared to spell those lies. We live in an era in which, very sadly, the Holocaust did not mark the end of genocide on this planet. We've seen subsequent genocides. We live in an era which, when anti-Semitism is still all too rife. We live in an era, almost unbelievably, in which some still try to deny the Holocaust. Finally, I think we need to learn the lessons of history from the Holocaust and the warnings that it, that it gives to us. As Lord Pickles indicated in his opening remarks, while frenzy, terror, and fanaticism were hallmarks of the, the Holocaust. So too were cold calculation in terms of organisation. So too were ordinary people who were ac either acquiescent or indeed perpetrators of the Holocaust. And in particular, at the heart of the Holocaust lay deception. So that many of those, indeed the vast majority of those going to the gas chambers, did not realise their fate until the very last second. And that was not to spare the feelings of those who were going to be victims, but for the perpetrators to ensure that they could carry out their wicked activities with the greatest levels of, of efficiency. A former leader of mine, the former First Minister of Northern Ireland, once described politics as a never-ending uh, relay race. And as the survivors of the Holocaust complete uh, their race, it falls to us to pick up the baton and ensure that it is our duty and our honour to make sure that we say to future generations not only that we are able to say never again, but we take action to ensure never again. My Lords, I should begin by declaring my interest as a member of the UK Holocaust Memorial Foundation 